Africa is a distinctly unique continent, rich in cultural diversity, a wealth of natural resources, amazing animals, and offers breathtaking tourist attractions as well. But that's not all. Incredibly, Africa's total size is roughly a fifth of the Earth's total landmass. This means Africa is larger than India, China, Mexico, and the USA combined. So you just know there are some great discoveries waiting for us out there, and some we certainly weren't expecting. Don't believe us? Check it out. 15 Shocking Things Recently Discovered in Africa Part 2 Danakil Desert The Danakil Depression is one of the world's hottest places as well as one of its lowest at 400 feet below sea level. At the northern end of Africa's Great Rift Valley and separated by live volcanoes from the Red Sea, the plain was formed by the evaporation of an inland water body. All the water entering Danakil evaporates and no streams flow out from its extreme environment. It's covered with more than 10 tons of salt. The tectonic plate activity in the Earth's crust is responsible for the depression's colorful lakes, steaming hot springs, geysers and rocky terrain. Danakil forms a part of a geological depression in the faraway northeastern part of Ethiopia, where three tectonic plates are slowly diverging. Over time, the volcanic eruptions nearby released lava that sealed off an inland sea that evaporated in the arid climate. The yellow, orange, green, red, blue, and green colors are due to the sea and rainwater from the neighboring coasts that get absorbed into the sulfuric glakes and heat up due to the volcano's magma. When the salt from the sea reacts with the minerals in the magma, it gives birth to these beautiful colors, and colorful crust-like deposits develop across the land. Fasten your seatbelts, because it's time for today's sweet topic. Of all the things discovered in Africa, could this be one of the most shocking? If this was an indicator, our best guess as to what the image captures is the fossilized head of an alien. Are you seeing the same thing? Many people believe that extraterrestrial intelligence visited Earth in the distant past, as evidenced by numerous archaeological artifacts whose scientific explanations prove unsatisfactory for alien enthusiasts out there. For example, believers in an ancient alien intervention would argue that ETs used acoustic stone levitation to build the Great Pyramids, yet conspicuously absent from the archaeological record are any artifacts more advanced than those known to be used by humans in the 3rd millennium BC. So maybe aliens did use sound to do so. But does this alien-esque artifact-looking stone, complete with eye slits and a mouthful of teeth, debunk popular science as we know it? The debate continues. It's up to you now. So let the world know in the comments below. And make sure to use the hashtag SweetTopic when you do. My Jingo Island This tiny island measures barely half an acre and is merely an outcrop of rocks. Nonetheless, it sits on Lake Victoria, which is the largest tropical lake on Earth and prime real estate for catching fish. It was barely inhabited until the 2000s, but now hosts as many as 500 fishermen. In fact, two Kenyan fishermen claim to have been the first inhabitants of the island. When they settled there in 1991, it was covered with weeds and many birds and snakes lived there. Subsequently, other fishermen came to the island because of its proximity to fishing grounds rich with Nile perch. With lots of money to be made and little space to fit all of the fishermen seeking their share, ownership of the island has overlapped, as well causing a dispute between Kenya and Uganda over who owns the valuable fishing waters. While the fight over the island might appear trivial, both Kenyans and Ugandans are well aware that resources mean everything. Fishing communities on Lake Victoria have seen massive reductions in their fishing catches in recent years, while the waters around the island are rich with Nile perch. As it stands, this island is a phenomenon, with bars, brothels, and a labyrinth of makeshift homes. American King A farmer from Virginia and America and the story of his daughter Emily is a real-life fairy tale story and the movie rights have already been sold. The devoted dad who promised his daughter she would one day become a princess fulfilled her wish by declaring a new kingdom in a desert in Africa. He started trying to find land that didn't belong to any nation or tribe or government and discovered Bear Tawil, the only piece of land on earth that was unclaimed. It didn't belong to Sudan or Egypt 
as verified by their maps for the last 100 years, so it was the ideal place to go and create his own country. Bear Taiwil, meaning deep well in Arabic, is situated south of the border between Egypt and Sudan. It's located by a strategically important, more extensive patch of land with rich soil. Neither Egypt nor Sudan want to lay claim to it, and it's said because it would mean giving up their claim to the more prosperous land. The discrepancy has meant Bear Tawil has stayed as a de facto no man's land for more than a hundred years until this king planted his family's flag. True to his promise, the devoted dad traveled to the no man's land to plant his flag on his daughter Emily's seventh birthday, finally making her a princess. <laughs> World's only poisonous rat. At first glance, the African crested rat looks like a cute, furry, gray rabbit with a little skunk mixed in. It's one of the larger and more attractive species of rat. But don't be fooled, they're also highly poisonous. Their fur loaded with a toxin so powerful that just a few drops are deadly enough to kill a human. The rats don't produce the poison themselves, rather they borrow it from a poisonous plant by chewing on the bark, mixing the toxin with their saliva and then grooming the lethal liquid into stripes of specialized hairs on their flanks. The rat harvests the toxin from a tree species known locally as the poison arrow tree, so named because its poison has long been used on the tips of hunting weapons. The bark contains an extremely potent toxin that affects muscle and nerves and can ultimately result in heart failure for most animals that come into contact with it. After the rat chews on the toxic bark, it spreads its now toxic saliva on specialized hollow and porous hairs that run in a band down the side of the animal. When the rat is threatened, these hairs stand up, revealing black and white stripes underneath. The researchers think these stripes serve to alert predators that biting would be unwise. <laughs> Robocops In the chaotic streets of Kinshasa, Democratic Republic of Congo's capital, home to some 9 million residents, ear-shattering honking and road accidents are the norm. Plus, it's a notorious one for bad traffic, so the police are getting a helping hand to help keep the cars moving. Robocops these giant traffic robots have appeared in the capital, a city where drivers normally spend hours in traffic and which have become notorious for corrupt law enforcement. Unlike their human counterparts, the robots are unable to collect bribes. At major intersections, towering aluminum robots stand and have been embraced for the smooth flow of traffic and protection of pedestrians. The eight-foot-tall robotic police are equipped with four high-definition digital cameras set in their eyes and shoulders that record every activity on the roads and transmit the video live to a central police command. They're also fitted with green and red signal lights on each hand to easily control traffic by raising their hand and a rotating chest that allows them to record every road activity. With electricity being a major problem in the country, the robots operate on solar panel and are fitted with autonomous power supply and have been built to withstand the year-round hot weather in the country. Moroccan Switzerland Located at an altitude of 5,460 feet above sea level, this small hill town in Africa has a Swiss alpine feel to it. With neat red-roofed houses, blooming flower beds, lake-studded parks, and snowbound winters, this remarkable European-style town is often referred to as Morocco, Switzerland. Ifrain boasts loads of powdery snow in the winter. In the summer, too, Ifrain is known as a cool city. Depending on which guidebook you consult, it's the coldest city in Africa. Initially planned as a garden city, it was laid out with curvy tree-lined streets interlaced with gardens and green areas. Originally, it had four chalet-style homes and a palace for the sultan. A post office was erected and a church was later added. Then a mosque, public market, and other amenities too. Many of the old chalet houses have been torn down and replaced with condos, though there are plenty of the high-pitched red roofs dotting the town. The lush greenery, cedar forests, and pasture land that comes to life in spring and winter is a sharp contrast to the hot and dry climate that surrounds it. Because of its accessibility, Ifran serves as a winter playground for anybody who flocks here to experience a European winter. Virtually free of crime, it's known as one of the best cities in all of Africa. 
men and women speak two languages. You know the old saying, women are from Venus and men are from Mars. Nowhere is that more evident than in Eubank, a unique Nigerian rural community where men and women have their own separate languages. Eubank is a language in Nigeria and the differences in vocabulary are considered far greater than in British and American English, for instance, since many words have neither similar sounds nor orthography. Men and women are able to understand each other. It's not exactly clear what proportion of the words in the men's and women's language are different, but there are enough examples to make sentences sound different when spoken by the opposite sex. There are a lot of words that men and women share in common. Then there are others that are totally different. These are not just some subtle pronunciation differences, but totally different words, and it's been like this for as long as anyone can remember. Yam in female language is called Iri. Yam in man language is called Kitong. They don't sound alike, they don't have the same letters, and they're completely different words. It's hard to believe that men and women who grew up together in the same community can end up speaking two different languages, but in the case of Yubang's residents, it's totally true. Sociable weavers Sociable weavers are a species of bird endemic to southern Africa. They're best known for their gigantic communal nests, which are not only a rarity but also the largest built by any bird. They build these massive communal nests too. Not unlike a bee's honeycomb, the communal nest consists of different chambers, entrances, and tunnels. The communal nests also attract other birds, even vultures, owls, and eagles, who may roost on the nest's broad roofs. More residents mean more eyes watching out of danger for predators like snakes. Plus, with so many families in a communal setting, new chicks receive help from multiple sources. It's all about teamwork with these birds. The nest designed for year-round usage can house up to 100 families, totaling up to 400 birds. Some nests have even remained occupied for over 100 years. Their nests can reach phenomenal heights and from a distance can look like a haystack stuck up in a tree or telephone pole. This also means the weavers are also ecosystem engineers. Over the years, the birds' droppings enrich the soil resulting in the tree growing more leaves, which giraffes eat, and providing more shade, which antelopes use in the heat of the summer, than trees without weaver nests. <laughs> Dung Jin an enterprising couple in South Africa is bottling gin infused with elephant dung. And now, liquor stores and restaurants are selling out of their Enlovu gin, Zulu for elephant. The idea came to the founders after visiting a game reserve home to a herd of majestic African elephants. There, the couple learned that only about 30% of the animal's bush diet of fruits, nuts, flowers, leaves, and bark is actually digested. The animals leave behind an undigested mass of flavorful botanicals in their giant clods of poop. After much experimenting, they learned that if they dried, washed, sterilized, and redried the elephant turds, they were left with an herbaceous smattering of African aromatics that could be safely infused into a base gin. The gin is enjoying healthy sales across South Africa and breaking into markets in Germany and Belgium all while wearing the curious infusion on its sleeve. An elephant graces the label of each bottle, framing the phrase, Elephant Infused Botanicals. Skeptics may poo-poo what comes across as a novelty item, but tasters far and wide are praising a uniquely smoky, woody, earthy flavor that comes from the unlikeliest of ingredients. Elephant Check-In each year, this lodge welcomes some rather large, gray guests. Whole families of elephants have been regular visitors for a number of years, arriving between late October and mid-December to feast on the fallen fruits from the large wild mango tree outside. They walk through the lobby like they own the place. At least three generations of one particular elephant family have returned annually, and their unusual dining habits and unique behavior have been the focus of many a TV documentary. Photograph, video, newsworthy article, and even children's books. An intrepid matriarch called Wonky Tusk was responsible for teaching her family to seek out the delicious fruits over a decade ago. Wonky Tusk's offspring, Lord Wellington, was born on the lodge grounds in 2009 and at just two days old took his first steps in the lodge. 
He's not shy either and has been known to lift a pin or two from the reception desk with his trunk. Undeterred by the fact that the safari lodge is in their path, the elephants carefully traverse the vaulted thatched reception, carefully negotiating the tiled steps. Why walk the extra few feet to go around when there's a nice lobby to saunter through or maybe take a nap in? <coughs> Baby DJ Meet DJ Arch Jr., the youngest DJ in South Africa. He's probably one of the most talented too. The little man appeared on South Africa's Got Talent to showcase his DJing abilities for a shot at winning their show and absolutely astounded the viewers and the judges with his on-point mixing skills. Before his big stage debut, the kid even got impatient waiting for his turn to impress the judges. I want to go on the stage, he told his dad. The three-year-old started DJing aged one on an app his dad downloaded. Now he's earning himself golden buzzers from the likes of a famous radio presenter on the judging panel. He's already pretty famous back home, his own fan page, and even DJs at kids' parties. DJ Arch Jr. had hoped to achieve the record during his final performance on the TV show. However, the Guinness World Records guidelines state that this challenge must take place in a club and last for at least 60 minutes. We're thrilled to say that DJ Arch Jr. has now officially secured the title at the incredibly young age of 5 years and 38 days. The toddler was completely oblivious to the crowd getting up on their feet and cheering for the pint-sized DJ. When asked how he wanted to celebrate, the young DJ requested some cupcakes. <coughs> Giant Crack in the Earth In northern Ethiopia, the African continent is slowly splitting apart and a new ocean is forming. In 2005, an eruption at a volcano nearby followed by a period of intense seismic activity started a crack in the Earth's crust that rapidly propagated south like a zipper opening. The fissure was 37 miles long and 25 feet wide, while the ground between them sank by 6 feet. All this happened in a matter of days. Over the course of the next few months, hundreds of crevices were seen splitting in the desert floor and the ground slumped by as much as 320 feet. At the same time, scientists observed magma rising from deep below as it began to form what will eventually become a basalt ocean floor. The formation of a new seafloor is usually hidden deep beneath the oceans, but a new ocean crust is being created at the Earth's surface providing geologists a unique opportunity to study the birth of a new ocean. Normally, geological processes such as the formation of rivers, seas, and mountains is a painfully slow process. But this is happening at a staggering rate, as you can see. For now, the highlands surrounding the Denikil Depression prevent the Red Sea from flooding these areas. But pretty soon, in geological timescale, erosion and tectonic plate movement will reduce the height of this natural barrier. Chinese Ghost Town In Angola, a mere 20 miles south of the capital city of Luanda, Rising out of the countryside is a mass of colorful housing blocks meant to signify modern living and modern communities in a modern Angola. Called the new city of Kalamba, there's just one problem. No one is moving there. Most of the area is largely deserted. Large numbers of buildings and shops remain shuttered and empty. The overriding majority of people that frequent the area remain construction workers and maintenance crew who don't actually live on site. According to real estate promotions, the 20-square-mile town has more than 20,000 apartments, 41 schools, and 17 health clinics. There are more than 100 retail spaces and 750 medium-sized apartment blocks being built. And soon, there will be fast highway access to downtown. The entire area could eventually have enough room to house some 500,000 people. Most of the country still survives on less than $2 per day. To pay for a low-end apartment in Colombo, the average Angolan would need to work more than 160 years. It's no surprise then that less than 10% of this first 2,800 apartments to go on the market have been filled. <laughs> Underground Churches Tradition has it that if you want to reach the heavens, you must build high. The great temples of the world have followed this form. Rising from the earth, their domes, spires, and minarets hoping to close the gap between the human and the divine. But in Ethiopia, 
a country that still insists on having 13 months in a year, they do things a little differently. And when it comes to churches, practitioners never saw a need for high vaulted cathedrals or dizzying bell towers. Instead, the greatest churches were carved out of living rock of the nation itself. And nowhere better illustrates this than Lalabella. Perched in the thin air of Ethiopian highlands, Lalabella has 13 magnificent churches that were patiently burrowed out of the rock on which the town stands. The churches only appear when you stand virtually above them, looking down from ground level to a series of carved trenches and courtyards that contain the monolithic places of worship. Legend has it that the churches came to the 12th century King Lalabella in a dream that urged him to create a new Jerusalem out of the dome of basalt where the town sat. While their history and precise construction remain largely undocumented, devotees believe at least one was built overnight with the help of angels. <coughs> Deadfly It was used as a psychic dream location in the Jennifer Lopez film The Cell, and it's hard to forget this barren, stark landscape. This dead forest is in Namibia. Believe it or not, it once contained a flowing river and housed many trees and plant life. The land itself is quite unbelievable, and at night, this haunting place has some of the clearest skies in the world. The name Deadfly literally translates to mean Dead Valley, as it's located in one of the harshest climates on Earth, in a valley between the tallest dunes in the world. The trees here have been dead for around 600 years and have been scorched black by centuries of sun. Once upon a time in the desert's history, the pan would have been a river or lake, but as time went on, the sand dunes started to close in and cut off the river, leaving a kind of paradise frozen in time. Now all that remains are tree skeletons trapped in a white clay marsh set against red rusted dunes and a brilliant blue sky. Nowadays, the temperature is so dry in this part of Namibia that the trees remaining cannot properly decompose, and the desert sun cooked them into the sand like blackened bones never to vanish from the earth. Even in its surreal, out-of-this-world appearance, it's known as being the most beautiful dead place on Earth. From snow-covered mountains to lakes full of colorful acid, who knew Africa was this extreme? But being such a large, dynamic continent, it's no wonder some pretty unbelievable stuff is turning up there. <laughs>